Hey, Andrew. Hey, Alex. What are we doing today? This is Brains on the Outside, a podcast about celebrating creativity through ridiculous business ideas. Each Monday, we pitch fun, fantastical, and weird businesses to make our ordinary lives much more extraordinary. That's right. We take our listeners' problems and imagine incredible new products and services to help them out of their pickle and hopefully make the world a better place. What if, for example, we protected all of your precious stuff by haunting it with ghosts? Putting it all in a haunted, haunted house. Yeah. (laughs) Or infecting it with the ring. (laughs) I mean, no one's going to want to steal that. No. So, Andrew, um, there's a lot of talk at the moment. Um, I've been asked several times, both in my current job and also by people that I work with, uh, how to get people to come back into the office. Yeah, it's really difficult, right? It is. Like, I, I mean, I feel like we're both pretty pretty much agnostic on whether people work yeah, from home or do whatever or hybrid or whatever it is. But like, how how would we get people back into the office? I mean, this is a good question for us, right? I think this is a good this there's a good there's a good set of businesses behind this. I know there's a lot of effort where we work to get people back in. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going quite pretty well, but I think we could push it even further. I mean, that sounds like the outside brain thing to do. Exactly. Yeah. So where 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 are you starting off here? What, what's your what's your initial initial pitch for us? Well, I mean, a lot of people put slides in their offices. Ah, right? Okay, like, like a, the tech startup yeah. Silicon slides. Exactly. Yeah. So what if we just put even more slides? What if we just put slides everywhere? Everywhere. What if we took out all the stairs? Every in the single whole, every single set of stairs. Right. Right. In the whole office. Yeah. So that you've got the dual thing of like you can slide down the stairs. Yeah. And have an exciting, finding fun and exciting time. Yeah. But if you want to go upstairs, you have to be naughty and you have to climb up the step, up the slide. Scurrying up a slide is very fun. It um, is. It's also it adds a bit of danger to your travel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it does. What if, like, I feel a person going down a slide always has right of way in the green cross code. <laughs> <laughs> so scurrying. I think it's in gravity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the laws of physics. Yeah. You always have right of way. I, like so. I think the. I don't want to overplay i think overplay the slide I want other things in here as well slide on the way down yeah scurry maybe up but also we could have like a ferris wheel oh ferris wheel way up slide way down oh shit yeah um That'd there's also right. there's also those there's also those fairground rides that just uh they are really high up yeah and they, it just drops you down really really fast oh. <laughs> so there's in a big pool of water yeah so i think that could also be a good way down that's that would be pretty fun exciting yeah like um i I really like like just the slides. Like you've obviously got a slide that goes down one floor, but what about a slide? Like you've got a slide hub that just goes to every floor. <laughs> you get to the top. <laughs> there's just one. There's an elevator that just takes you to the top, and yep. then from there, if you want to get to the third floor, you have got to go all the way to the top and then down to the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you, you, do you mean like there is a slide like you're going down and you have to bail? You have to jump off. When oh no! It gets to the I was like, you know, say you got twenty floors in the building. You got one slide for every floor oh, from the top floor, right? Yeah, okay. And then one slide that takes you from that floor down to the ground. So if you want, to, like, if you want to go from the third floor to the sixth floor, you have to go down to the ground, up in the lift to the to the twentieth floor, and then down <laughs> to the sixth floor on the slide. That would like exciting times. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. So, right, we've we've kind of nailed that thing going up and down. Yeah. What about on the flat? You you enter the front door. You're you're now on the fourth floor. Yeah. When you get to your office, you get to your desk. Yeah. How are we getting someone? From the front door to their desk. Uh, dodge him. Dodge him's, Okay. Dodge would be great for conflict resolution as well, I think. Oh. <laughs> H- HR, like any conflict mediated through dodge him. Battle. Yeah, board meeting. Board, just put him, what, board what do you want to dodge him's? You want to make a decision? Just dodge him it out. <laughs> or like laser quest. Ooh. Like, oh, you... that's really, yeah. A whole floor would just be laser quest. Seventh yeah. floor, laser quest floor. Yeah, it's just people trying to work, but there's also people laser questing yeah, around yeah, yeah. them as well. It's very difficult if you're typing up a document and there's a little like, green dot like, <laughs> sight, like, s- s- like flying across your screen. Nice. Um, what if we just took your whole office and put it in a fairground? Do, 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 what, what do you mean? Do you mean it's outside in a fairground or do you mean like is, 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 it, is it still physically a building? Like or you each just... department is a different fairground ride. Ooh. So like, hang on, let me just think. Yeah, so each department... Is a fairground ride mm-hmm. of its own. Right. You want to go to marketing? That's the one that, like, the chair plane. Oh yeah, okay. spin around. You want to go to HR? That's the like the parachute drop. Yeah, you know. Um, and if you want to have a, if you're having a serious <laughs> HR meeting, that's where you have to go. You have to go there and to have that. 
you know how like uh, you have to like book meetings with people instead of booking a team's meeting do you get like a little ticket stub yeah, to go exactly. into that to go, into to go that on that room? ride yeah yeah so like um your ghost train mm-hmm. each of the carriages in the ghost train is actually just a meeting room so you want to have uh, you want to book a meeting room you you take a ticket, then you sit on the ghost train, you go around the ghost train, you have your meeting on the ghost train as you go around. So every meeting room as well is a different, th- is, a, is, a, is, a, is that a different room in the haunted house or how are we? Oh man, yeah, I hadn't even thought of that. Like I was just like on the train, like if the if the ghost train's made up of like five carriages, each carriage is a meeting room oh, of itself. Right. Uh, so I, 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 I imagine the ghost would be very small, like a, like a, like a child's train that goes through parks sometimes, but you're meeting a full-size train. Each carriage, there's the... There's the yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think of five different scary things that could be in a haunted house. I was like, fuck, I can't think of what. Um, okay, so so each each cabin in the train is a whole meeting room, you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you want to go in there. You got like, you know, maybe you got five carriages there. Mm-hmm. The first one is someone getting promoted. The second one is the board meeting. Yeah. The third one is like the operations people talking about how to improve productivity. The fourth one, the fourth <laughs> meeting room is is someone and the probationary review. So every every aspect, we have uh, fun fared every aspect of this office. So every space right now is also doubles up as a productive space. Is there any room that is actually designed for fun? Or is this all like, there's no fun fair room that is specifically for fun. Every fun fair room is for an office reason. Yeah, well, well, yeah, because I mean, this every is a workspace, right? every room, yeah, every room is for work, but it's also for fun. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, we just put meeting rooms like everywhere. The Ferris oh, wheel, shit, everything is... on the Ferris wheel is a meeting room. <laughs> oh, I. This is great because at five p.m., all your workers leave. Uh, oh, oh man, yeah, alternative and then, use of then space. you get the punters in. And then you're you're just running a fun fair at five o'clock. <laughs> oh shit! Extra income, man. This yeah. is oh man, it's it's perfect. That's a big problem, right? Having these offices stand empty the whole time, mm-hmm. but between na- f- five and nine a.m., it's an actual fun fair. Yeah, this simplifies work nights out as well. Oh because man, at five you o'clock, at work. you just stay in your office. <laughs> just keep going yeah and it's no longer serious dodgems for work times it's fun dodgems for fun times <laughs> <laughs> i feel like this 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 is perfect for all like white collar workers right if you're a manufacturer it's a bit more difficult right maybe right if you're a big manufacturing firm uh-huh. we just turn the entire inside of your factory floor except for where the machinery is yeah into huge soft play oh that's very safe yeah that's so very- like these places are notoriously dangerous, right? It's good to have a lot of soft things there. To <laughs> exactly, yeah. You want it out. Climbing around, it's got slides in it and stuff. But mm-hmm. like, if you want to go from the heat treatment machine to the metal pressing machine, you like you have to climb up and then you have to monkey bars. Oh, yeah, And then yeah. you have to like go across the rope bridge. <laughs> and then there's like those dangly like boxing glove things. Boxing, yeah, what yeah. are they called? The boxing punchy things. Punch bags. And you have to get like through those. And then down the other side, and then you get to the to the metal pressing machine, and you can you can do whatever function you need to on that. I bet people in there are super stressed the whole time. I mm-hmm. bet it's very stressful being in this sort of environment. So I think having having fairground rides there will really help them out. <laughs> I feel like it will. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. And I, you know, I've, I've always wanted soft play. You mm-hmm. know, climbing stuff for for adults. It's fun. Yeah, this fits into something I think we once talked about before. I'm not sure on the show, but like uh, just play parks for grown ups. Yeah. Holy shit, yeah, man. Yeah. But okay, it's now your office. Is that? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> would you, would you, if our office yeah. was like this, would you go every day? Yeah. How much work would you get done? As much as I do now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Alex, it's the ad time. It is, and I have got a pretty good one this week as well. Oh, nice. What is it? It fits pretty nicely, actually, with what we've just been talking about, oh, really? which is interesting architects. Uh, these ar- architects, they design very strange buildings. You know, your your business, you want it to, you, you work really hard on it, it's maybe doing really great, but you know somewhere deep down in 500 years, maybe your cafe or toy shop or factory, people probably probably won't remember it 
you know? Sad you, but true. Exactly. You want to immortalize this forever. Yeah. And these architects do that specifically, design buildings do that. Ooh. They do it by designing it in such a way it will freak out a future archaeologist. <laughs> they will see this building and be like, what in God's name was this for? And it'll, it'll confuse them. It'll really weird them out. And that's the only projects these architects accept. So if that sounds like a bit, if this sounds like a problem you're having, you can give them a call. Oh, that's amazing. What 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 kind of buildings have they have they done already? Which have you got any examples? So um, so the the thing they always draw upon is like Stonehenge. Whoa, they've been around a while. Well, well, they, they, well, they they argue that Stonehenge is probably meant for a really boring thing like right. a shop, but okay. the architects were like, let's freak some guys out in 2020, <laughs> and then they build a really weird building around it. Ah, nice. Have they got any other buildings? Like, I always feel like the Gherkin. Yeah, I mean, if if, if someone saw the Gherkin or like the Sydney Opera House mm. in like 2,000 years, they'd be like, what, what is this? What was this? What was this for? Yeah. Come on, we also your theories. That, that, and yeah, that's the sort of projects they exclusively work on. Nice. So that's just a legacy that you take forward into the future is like, it, your legacy is people going like, what the fuck? What the fuck? It didn't. Yeah. What you, was this for? It's the sort of things you, if there was an episode of Ancient Aliens in the year <laughs> 3005, yeah. it, this building would feature in it. There'd be like, no way a human would have made this right now. I, I, I love that. So if, if, if you are a manufacturer and you've got a big factory, do they just like add a bunch of extra pipes and extra yeah, cogs yeah, and stuff? You, yeah. Weird, like, maybe you design carpets mm-hmm. but they would fill it full of like machinery to make cars like loads and loads they put a zoo on the side of it <laughs> they'll build a really tall tower on the top so just like it's indiscernible you have no idea what this building's doing ah that sounds like an incredibly useful an incredibly useful service what 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 would i what would i google if i wanted to find this business out so that i could use them andrew the, the the name they've given me yeah. is Alien Architects. Oh, okay. Does that sound that sounds good? I think that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if well, usually you get like a you know other products we we advertise as like a discount code. Oh yeah, bought to fifty, a lot of money off. Now, these are architects. This is a huge multi-billion dollar project you're about to embark on. So if you use a code. Boto 0.0005, you will get like a tenth of a percent off. <laughs> they they can't afford to be throwing around huge discount codes. You get a, a few bricks for free. Yeah, you get you get like one consultation. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, if you if you buy a building, they'll just add a bunch of spikes to it. Yeah. Yeah, just that's it. That's In it. one corner. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's fabulous. Wonderful. Um, so uh, if anybody else wanted to get in touch with the show, Andrew, how would they best do that? There is a few ways. There is our email, which is brainsontheoutside at gmail.com. Uh-huh. There is our Twitter account, which is brainsoutside. And there is our Instagram, which is brains on the outside. What sort of stuff are we looking for? We are looking for, well, I mean, we're just looking for people to write in with problems that they've got. Like, how do we get people back into our office space? Or... I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> How can I make the change into cutting animal hair? It's <laughs> actually a pretty interesting question that you just come up with right there. Yeah. We will return to that in a future episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, if people want to write in with the problem, any of those ways is, is the right way to do it. Or if you just want to mention us on any of your socials, We'll give you a shout out on the show. That'd be amazing. I think the be- the best, these are the two best things you can do for us. Either, um, yeah, post spies or send us an email. Yeah, just tell your friends. That's really what we want. That would, yeah, we would be, really, we would really appreciate that. that. Yeah, fab. All right, should we crack on? Let's crack on. So, Andrew, this is kind of a work-based episode for us. Um, because one of the other questions that we keep getting asked is about the metaverse. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we look at this a little bit in our actual jobs. Yeah. Um, and you hear, you read a lot about it. And I'm not, a, I've, 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 I've not spent too much time in the metaverse, but it seems kind of a, the in thing right now. I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm a little bit scared of it. You think you'll like it too much? You think you'll go too deep? I think we're going to like it too much, man. Oh, too deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can get pretty addicted to games like, pokemon or world of warcraft yeah if i was fully 
immersed in there. In there. I don't know how I get out. I mean, it's bad. Like I've I've run a bunch of meetings in the metaverse of late, just as experiments, and it's difficult to leave the meeting. Like I just like it in there. So what? What are you saying? What you need is ways to escape. I I need it. <laughs> Someone to pull the pull the thing out the back of your head, like in the Matrix. In the Matrix, I need I need a yeah. I need to not get addicted to the metaverse because I'll lose everything. <laughs> Oh Jesus, man! That was. <laughs> we we can talk about that later. I think. <laughs> Off air. Uh, okay, so uh, something you right? Maybe you've been in there for like twenty minutes, well, yeah. something, an hour. Yeah. And I was like, you've been the things flashes up. You've been in there for an hour. You've been mm-hmm. in there for an hour. Get out. And maybe you ignore that. And then if it, oh, yeah. you don't, if you, if you ignore it, we sideload on our new app. Oh yeah. Designed to get you out. <laughs> now I think like. Being frightened is one way to leave, but that's a bit too. That's 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 the easy yeah. way out. Uh, I, I think I've become numb to that after a little yeah. while, to be honest. I, I think we need to freeze you out with boredom. <laughs> well, so just like you, you, it just drops you into like a white room. There's nothing to do. Yeah, it is. It is a perfect. Actually, yeah, it's it's a perfect recreation of your house, one to one, and then we just send you on housework tasks. <laughs> So it's like you you are now vacuuming you are now vacuuming a metaverse version of your house, not the real one either. So in your head, you're like, "Shit, I could just be doing this." That's exactly <laughs> it. It's actually, like I could just be cleaning Why my am house I right now, pretending to clean my house when I could be actually cleaning my house and get the side effect benefit of having a clean house. Yeah, you're you're like up there doing your laundry. It's like, oh God, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that I feel like that. Yeah, that would definitely that would kick me out for sure. Especially if it was something like mowing the lawn. I hate mowing the lawn. I think uh, this could be an extra sensory experience. If you're out there mowing the lawn, like maybe we'd have people there spritzing you with water as if it was raining. <laughs> <laughs> you keep like, it gets work and you go over a rock and you have to right, replace the motor blade. And yeah. What about, it just make, makes you do taxes. I it, sitting there on a keyboard that's like so you, there's really good finger tracking now right yeah and those uh, in the quests but like we would do it so like actually the finger tracking became a bit shit <laughs> so when you were typing it was always just like you were always like one or two keys off you were like shit <sighs> backspace you kept, hitting, kept hitting enter you're like trying to type, type a and you're getting like c be really messy what if we brought elements from the metaverse into real life Oh, we keep trying to we we keep trying to double up real life in the metaverse, but we should be pulling yeah. the fantastical elements into real life. What did you? So I, I immediately think that I just I'm imagining like those videos of like being in Mark Zuckerberg's office. Are you saying we're just going to drag Mark Zuckerberg here? What was your what was <laughs> what, what, what was your what's your idea here? What's your so what about if we if we just went ahead and invented teleportation? And so, like, if I want to have a meeting in a meeting room with someone from the other side of the world and someone from a different office, I just press the button and teleport them straight you've, into my ro- office, into the room that I want to, that I've booked out. You, you've taken a big technological leap here. <laughs> <laughs> What's but your R and D budget on this? <laughs> a kajillion. A kajillion. So yeah, so I do that. I just like, oh, I need to meet with Andrew uh, and Charlie. Just press a button. Boop. Andrew and Charlie in my in my meeting room suddenly Charlie's been she's been ripped out of bed in Australia, <laughs> in Australia and zoomed across the planet to to like because <laughs> <laughs> that was a benefit of the metaverse but in real life what about we just made it so that you wore the the goggles but actually it was just they were just there was just nothing there it was just like see through. <laughs> So, oh, so you you so always you, thought you, you were, think you're in the metaverse. That's actually, but actually you're in real solid. life. Yeah, like you could sell them really expensive as well. Yeah. Like imagine a press conference being like, we've invented like hyper realistic pass through VR goggles. Yeah, one to one with reality. What we do, we blindfold people. We take them to a new room and we say, well, now you're wearing the goggles. <laughs> <laughs> we've put the retinal contacts in. And now you're in the metaverse. You're in the metaverse. Doesn't mate. it look realistic? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it look up? Just reach out and touch something because we've got haptic feedback. <laughs> we it. have lidar scanned <laughs> an entire Everything. conference hall. Yeah, I've dropped it into a metaverse. There's something about like 
like the the metaverse suddenly becomes boring when everything in the real world is in the metaverse one to one. <laughs> so you put the goggles on and it's just like you're in the same exact room the, in the same exact place. This is actually that's a really interesting point of like because we we've played with like lidar scanners to scan rooms. Are you, are you suggesting that like when someone perfects that technology, when Apple comes out and like we can lidar scan your room and drop it into the metaverse, and we're like, but I'm already in that room. <laughs> I'm already there. Yeah. Like, well, well, now you can NFT it. So, well, huh. I already own it. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine. It's yeah. mine. I have that room. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> what about so in the metaverse you can look like anything anytime, right? Yeah, yeah. What if what if we gave you a full set of makeup artists and a massive like costume company, wardrobe company? That's it, right? You have you, your wardrobe company. You have your uh, makeup artists. Uh, maybe you have a like a like a another room in your house, like that room Troy and Abed have, mm-hmm. or like the Star Trek holodeck. Yeah, where like we just have a team, and you're like, okay, now I want to go. Um, I don't know. Where do you want to go, Alex? Uh, Bali. You want to go to Bali? So you tell your makeup artist. You tell the room designer, and then they just they just fix you fix that fix that up for you in your metaverse room which is actually a real room it's just a real room that your designers have gone in yeah we call it the real verse the real verse the real verse room <laughs> yeah and they just made it made it like that well, what? exactly like that then if you really liked it you get your lidar scanner out yeah. scan it and then drop it back into the metaverse <laughs> <laughs> the circle is complete the circle is complete nice because you're right it's it's, it's the ability to go anywhere and look like anything with your friends. What about if we made it much more comfortable for you? Because like when you LiDAR scan something, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Like the technology is amazing, but everything's just a tiny bit melty. Yeah, yeah. So what if we we made a business that like came, LiDAR scanned your room, All put right. that into the metaverse, and then made your real life room look like the metaverse version of your room? So they just make everything a little bit melty, a little bit. Okay, can you can you explain to the listener what you mean by the lidar scan make things look melty? <laughs> so when you lidar scan a room with an app like Polycam, uh, it uses a bunch of later lasers and cameras to pick up all of the different features of the room. But it doesn't always pick up the corners and stuff, but it doesn't pick up the edges, and you have to be really careful about where you scan it. So. It looks very much like your room, but sometimes like the shelves are a little bit too thick or like they're a bit droopy. So so you, you LiDAR scan it, your yeah. LiDAR scan's a bit shit, but it's in the metaverse now, the true representation of yeah. how things should be. So we go in with a hairdryer and just we just melt your room a bit. Melt your room down, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the case for everything. In fact, if someone comes in and just like a graduate has just like has has just gone through and 3D modeled our office but all his doors are very slightly too short <laughs> in the thing. So we just go in, like remake your office with all the doors too short. Th- this is, that's really sensible. Like you making the technology to p- properly recreate a room is hard. So we will make the room easier to recreate or drag it down. Done. Yeah. Make you feel at home when you're at home and you're not in the metaverse <laughs> in your home. This is where you feel at home. This actually ties back quite nicely into what if you guys get to the metaverse? You're in the metaverse. You're now used to your pseudo room. You're yeah. used to your metaverse version of room, which is now actually slightly off. So when you take your glasses off, you don't feel at home anymore because your your real your real meatverse room <laughs> doesn't look like your metaverse room. We'll fix that. We'll we'll ease that transition up. The meta to meet. The meta to meet pipeline. Nice. That was the show. That was the show. It's over now. It's done. It's done. But there'll be another one next week. Ah, um, if if you want, if people want to be involved in the next week episode, I, I'm talking in a big clip now. <laughs> if people want to be involved in the next week episode, how would they do that, Alex? They would contact us via one of the following methods: email brains on the outside at gmail.com, Instagram brains on the outside, or on Twitter brains outside. And what would they contact us about? They might bring us a problem. Or an idea, or something that we can solve. Like, a big question, like, how would you deliver incredibly breakable work surfaces <laughs> to lots of different houses all at once, That's for example? That's the exact sort of question we'll take on with ease. Yeah. Or how do I become less efficient at work? 
that was that was an all-timer. Yeah, yeah. that was a good one. Uh, that's the sort of thing that we're looking for. If you've got a problem like that, please get in touch. Please, please, please. We love it. And we will be back. On Monday. Next Monday. Yeah. Alex, yeah. keep your brain on the outside. Keep your brain on the outside, Andrew.